Well, hello there, person. Today's topic, making the game Wraith Binder, is um, 3D particles. So now we have three-dimensional particle systems going on. Before, I had two-dimensional particle systems. So, for example, when we jump up in the air like this, we make all these little dust particles on the ground behind. It wouldn't. You, we, we would see that these dust particles would render on top of that pillar right there before and now we've got them nicely behind the pillar in complete 3d loving this loving this check us out we've used the little oh, we're out of uh, man, matter here um we use levit or sorry this is telekinesis same thing draws nicely behind things let's go on turn like let's try out some boots and some other items this, uh there's a lot of items left to be done but a lot of items have been completed with their new three-dimensional particle systems. And I've also got a cool way the particle systems work now, which is a lot easier um, to develop. Uh, but check this out. Um, we've got a uh, same thing with these little dust trails here with the running. That's super fun. And then also the sparks. Yeah, so when we when we hit um, like these pillars, we've got sparks coming off. Those are now 3D as well. So if we hit these sparks down here, if you can really tell but they are they are rendering behind uh, there we go that's a good way to tell they're rendering behind those gates right there that's cool so three-dimensional particle systems very excited about that I don't know why this fire this fire entity is floating up so high right there oh it's flow period is off from its parent okay this fire thing is just fine nope this one's off too shoot I gotta work on that well, anyways, noticing bugs while I'm talking about something else. Sorry about that. Um, some other things that have been fixed lately are like the health bars. Those I used to have a problem where they were blending to black, and for now I just blend them to the the background color. And then also the clouds are way more spaced out too. So you can see in the in the bottom here, wherever I go in the whole world, the clouds are kind of even. They're kind of spaced out evenly. And that just helps them to be more consistent, less random. Um, also, I'm, so there, there's some some speed trails need to be. I need to work on those. See how those speed trails are coming out a little bit too far to the front. Um, but also there's there's now um, only two colors. I'm playing around with only having two colors on the screen. So right now, basically, there's blue and there's orange. So any player that's blue would be on my team, and anybody that's orange would be on a different team. So this is like orange, it's not my base. If I steal it, it'll turn to blue. Here, let's, let's um, telekinesis this guy out of, out of the way. Oops. Ah! Got some ideas for the telekinesis too. I wanna make that uh, lock on. So I'm probably gonna have some kind of targeting system. So when you oh, let's, let's kill this guy, steal his base, this will all turn blue. There we go. Okay, so let's look at some of the code behind these new particle systems. These 3D particles. Um, they can run now. I used to have them kind of in a complicated system, which I always wanted to simplify, and finally found a way to simplify. So these particles. Um, are basically just vec. Or there, there is a particle system called particles. That's a structure, but it's a system. Um, and then it has some overall variables, and then it has its vector of particles, right? And so then this vector of particles is each particle has an index, a position, a scale, a color, type, vectors, um, and then all this other stuff: angles, radiuses, percentages, effects, and stuff like that that can run on it. Um, here's the, the kind of the heart of it all: is that the particles, the particle kind, right? I used to basically have to create a different kind of particle system and then a whole different amount of code uh, its own subsystem you could say for each one of these kinds in fact I think there's like if animate kind sparks yeah yeah see this it has to animate the particle every single particle has has to write code for it but now we have this new thing where it's a kind called action and this is super great because I can use the action system which I use to write a lot of Songbringers um, animations. I can just 
pretty much just refactor those into a particle system which runs on actions. And so the way the, the action system works is that basically every particle also has a vector of actions and you can push back some actions and then the particle system can run the actions um, and just apply it like it would any kind of generic system. So it doesn't have to, I don't have to go and write a separate amount of code for each different new kind of particle system I want to create. I just create some actions for them. Let's take, for example, these sparks. Uh, yeah, sparks in anims. I think this is, this is the next one, next function. Okay, here we go. So here's uh, here's the new code, if one, I turned on an if one and, it, and if zero. Here's the old code. Basically what it was doing it was it was setting up a bunch of variables. Or sorry, sorry, looping, first of all, well, we're looping over a certain amount of particles it wants to create. So N is the number of particles. And then we got setup code and then boom right here we're creating a sprite right which well uh, sorry this is actually a plane which is just a, a two triangles um so not a, not an actual sprite but still it's using cocos 2dx's old system where it's basically just a 2d system right um so we've got it sets up the it creates the plane it sets a name a color a scale a rotation opacity it creates an action to remove it later it runs another action on this two-dimensional sprite for moving the particle uh, it runs another action for fading it in and out it runs another action where it flashes the color and then it runs another action where it scales bigger and gets longer and then shortens um, so that was all in 2D, and here's the new 3D system. So basically, it's um, creating an entity, first of all. This is not as efficient as I would like it to be, where it has to create a separate entity for every different particle system, but I got some ideas to fix that. Um, so, but, but, but still, this is pretty cool that it's, it's creating a separate entity to, to handle that particle system, which is kind of convenient for uh, some, in some ways it's actually more convenient. But basically, that uh, is using a kind called action, like we were just talking about, and the amount, it passes in the amount of particles it'll have in that system. So when this is uh, actually created, it gets created right here. It creates the entity and um, creates an entity called particles. And then as soon as the um, the entity is created, then it goes and looks at the particles inside that uh, the particles entity that got created from this data. Um, it goes and loops over all the particles in that system and then sets them up, right? And sets them up with actions. So all we need to do is set up a color a position if this is optional in this case the sparks have a zero position because the position is relative to the parent entity the uh that's containing the particle system so we have to we can just start with a zero position in this case um and then the color scale and vector really are the only things you need to set up you don't even need a vector but you don't even technically need a scale you can put the scale to one so all you would have is basically just a color for that particle uh, but anyways, these are your basic data elements, right? Your plain old data. Nothing, uh, uh, nothing to do with all these other more complicated bits of data that have to do with all those other special systems. In fact, I'll, I will hopefully convert all my particle systems over to this new action thing and delete all this old code. We don't need this, these old systems to run anymore because we can do everything with these actions. So check it out. We can actually just push back some actions, right? Here's that same move action. Here's those fade in, fade out actions. Here's that flash action. And here's that scaling action. All just kind of refactored. We didn't have to go and create a whole system, test that system's code, blah, 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 blah. It, this, this old particle system I had was just way too cumbersome. And this is so flexible and awesome and easily uh, refactorable. So I love this new system. And basically to get that to all to work, was actually kind of a neat thing here. I got action, so it can run an action. Um, it can update an action based on um, a templated type, so a type name. So what we have here is action is sort of this generic action, right? It can run all sorts of actions and stuff like that, but it can run itself on any kind of class. So particles implements its own um what is what does particles even have to set up to use an action nothing there's nothing in uh, oh yeah there's one thing that part that it has to do is it has to include action dot inline so let's take a look at that too action dot inline is part of this whole system so here's here's these templated functions right all the only thing that actually needs to include this is basically the cpp file for any 
type of node or whatever or class or structure that is going to use actions, right? So only particles and node.cpp need to include action.inline um, because only nodes run actions um, which is kind of like based on the Cocos 2D node. If you're familiar with Cocos 2D at all, everything is a node and everything can be a child of another node and stuff like that. Um, so this kind of represents that. And then particles can also run actions um, and uh, they have their own, they have their own separate systems. Oh, it's so yeah, here's how the action inline works. Basically, um, we've inlined the update function. All it does is it updates its elapsed and then runs an action function. So this templated function here has to take a map of action types to update functions. All this once again is templated based on T. So we can run this on any type of structure or whatever. And then also the, the these other things have been sort of templatized for, um, for running actions where we've got action sequence is the same for any type of uh, structure or basic underlying node. This is all the exact same code, except that it has to know what a T is when it calls um, child.update. So it's calling child, child is a T and, or I think so, something like that. But anyways, it needs to know the T. Same thing with these action repeats, repeat forever, ease and delay. All these can be templatized. And, um, and then here's how it implements it. So let's go ahead and look at action. Let's look at like action move here. It, this is a good example. Uh, man, let's go a little simpler. Fade. Action fade. So fade basically just gets its percentage to fade and sets up an opacity for that. And then in the case of a node, it calls node.set opacity. Pretty simple, right? Let's look at action fade for particles. Particles, same exact thing. We've got the percentage, the opacity, but it just sets the, the particles color. P.color.a equals opacity. So each one of these um, particles.cpp and node.cpp run has it uh this is the map right here of action types to functions so we've got see that action fade right here in particles we're calling that and that's called whenever we call this right here so action update we can call uh that with our action functions in this private cpp file so nothing has to be slower in the header files and uh, here's it it's implementing those templatized functions it doesn't have to go and repeat any code there. So what we've got here basically is action.h used to only work with node. Now it works with node or particles or whatever I want in the future. So we've got this cool action system that could run on any type of structure. So uh, I think we've covered all the ramblings we need to ramble about today. Um, once again, we've got 3D particles and a lot of different new um, fun stuff related to that in the works. Um, so I'll be converting more of these types of particle systems over to using the new 3D systems. There's a couple of things that are, that are still left to do. And um, yeah, I'm just really happy with how the visuals are coming along with, with Wraithbinder. I'm really, really, really happy with, with everything here. The aesthetic has grown a lot. The, the visuals have really improved a lot and I'm very happy with that. And these 3D particles are, are part of that. You know what I mean? This is just make things look better. And it actually makes things look less cluttered too, because the 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 actual um, particles are not rendering on top of stuff that they shouldn't be, which used to make things look crazy cluttered when we had only two dimensional effects. So, thanks for watching this video. We'll catch you with another one later, and um, peace out, friend, person.